My name is Heather Stewart and this is my vlog assignment for the last lecture by Randy Posh. He was a tenure professor at Carnegie Mellon. Um, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer with only months to live whenever he did this lecture. Um, and he chose not to talk about death, um, but to talk about um, childhood, achieving childhood dreams. Um, he had a couple of cool ones. Uh, some of them he got to experience, which was um, being in zero gravity. Um, he also got to be an Imagineer at Disney, which I thought was really, really cool. He got to go on sabbatical and do that. Um, he covers many things that can be taken as life lessons. Um, eight of them that I'm going to go over. Um, the first one is we cannot change the hand we're dealt, um, but we can change and control um, how we play the hand. Basically, um, things are going to happen in our lives that are out of our control, um, but we can control how we react to it, whether it be uh, positive or negative. Um, I'm going to give an example in my life a little later. Um, another lesson is brick walls are there for a reason. He says that it can separate people who don't really want it. Um, I used to be pretty bad about giving up, especially in my younger years. Um, but I strive uh, now to keep trying. Um, one example is me going back uh, years later to get my bachelor's degree. Um, number three, getting criticized is the best thing that can happen to you. Um, people that if they stop correcting you when you're doing wrong, they basically quit caring, which is not something you want. Um, I feel that I can take constructive criticism pretty well already. Um, I'd definitely rather know if I've hurt somebody's feelings or done something wrong. Um, number four, people are more important than things. That's something I definitely agree with. Um, nothing wrong with having things, but it should not come before people, especially your family. Um, actually, one of my favorite t-shirts says, um, collect memories, not things. Uh, number five, apologize correctly. Um, anybody can say they're sorry, um, but I take that to mean is you got to put action behind it. If you say you're sorry and then you continue um, to go down that path, um, the apology is not very sincere. Um, you need to... Um, figure out what you need to do to correct the behavior or how to make it right. Number six, show gratitude. Um, always be grateful for your life. There's usually always someone who has it worse than you. Um, case in point, Randy, um, he's dying and he says he wants to have fun every day of his life. Um, and he plans to, or he continued to do that until the day he died. Um, Number seven, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Uh, sometimes things work out, uh, even if you don't quote win. Um, take that opportunity to find out what you can learn from that. Um, even the bad things, usually there's something you can learn. Uh, number eight, stop complaining, just work harder. Um, I'll be honest, I gotta work on the complaining on my end. Um, I definitely don't have any issue with the work harder part. Um, complaining doesn't do any good we know this but sometimes we do it anyway um, and there are people in my life that are also complainers so um, I may need to try to distance myself from them a little bit more or just you know make a mental effort not to join in when they start complaining uh, one of my favorite things he went over um, he's like do you want to be an Eeyore or a Tigger in life uh, honestly a little bit more of Eeyore um, but I hope to uh, try to start being a little more like Tigger. Um, three, uh, three words of advice he mentioned was tell the truth. Um, and he also mentioned if he could add three more words to it, he'd say all the time. Uh, sometimes, you know, that seems very simple. But sometimes it's a little easier to tell a white lie than to actually admit the truth. Um, five, five words of advice to live by. Um, I had a little hard time with this one. He, it seemed like there were several that you could choose from. Um, 
stop complaining, just work harder, sing to people, and uh, when you screw up, apologize. Um, focus on others, not yourself. Um, an example he did, he uh, took time out of that lecture, which could be all about him, and his wife's birthday was the day before and didn't get a chance to celebrate it. So he brought her up and everybody sung happy birthday and they brought out a big cake for her. So that was very, very sweet. Um, and I think we can all agree that it definitely feels good when we do stuff for others um, that brightens their day. Um, uh, another one I took from it was find the best in everybody. That's a little bit hard uh, for me personally um, there are some people that it's really easy to find the best in there are others that are not so um, it's definitely good advice um, and it goes back to just having positivity um, just something a little extra that I liked um, was when he talked about the head fakes which is basically uh, making someone think they're learning one thing but they're actually learning something else I thought that was really, really, really cool. Um, the first head fake uh, was that the lecture is not um, about achieving childhood dreams so much as how to lead your life. Um, the second head fake was that it wasn't actually for the audience, for us, it was for his children. So that was, that was really great. You know, that's something that they would always have um, a part of him. Um, I think the world would definitely be a better place if we were all a little more like Randy. Um, but go into an example of the hand I was dealt and how I reacted to it. Um, so when I was 15, I started working at McDonald's. This is back when they actually hired 15 year olds. You could only work, I think it was like maybe 15 hours a week. And I saved and saved and saved for a year so I could do a down payment on a car. It was a 98 Toyota Corolla, which was fairly new. I'm not gonna give my age away, but it was fairly new at that time. Um, had it maybe a month, being a new driver, wasn't completely careful, uh, went around a curve and ended up wrecking it. Um, I was devastated because I had pretty much used all my savings to get that car. Um, it was to the point where I didn't even wanna try to drive anymore. I was scared and just very disappointed in myself. Um, and I got into kind of a slump. Um, obviously I couldn't stay that way. Um, I finally, you know, got the courage to start driving again. Uh, my granddad, who's wonderful, um, searched around and got me a used, uh, 1990 Ford Escort. While it definitely wasn't as new or quite as nice as the Corolla, it was a low mileage car that he just happened to get. It was only a one owner, maintenance been updated and everything. Um, he even took the time to uh he'd stop by randomly and just pick the car up and take it to get the oil change so um taught me to be very humble uh very appreciative especially for the people in your life um you know showing the gratitude um because he definitely didn't have to do that um he let me he paid for the car and he let me just pay him back as i could um and if there were times I didn't get as many hours, I mean, he didn't give me a hard time about it, but I would always come back and make sure um, to pay him. So even though it was a family member, I made sure that I was responsible. So I felt at first I didn't handle it very well, you know, kind of moped and reveled, uh, you know, just self-pity and things like that. But um, when I did finally get out of the slump, you know, I, I had a whole new appreciation, especially for my grandfather who, you know, as you know, we can take people for granted as well. So thank you for watching.